Now let's take a look at the example case control study. So there was a report of a potential outbreak of acanthamoeba keratitis in America in 2007, which is caused by this single cell living organism acanthamoeba shown in this picture. So this is a very rare condition. Um, so the estimated annual incidence in America is a one or two uh, cases per million contact lens wearers. However, um, this um, is potentially blinding and very serious type of coronal infection, which is almost always associated with contact lens use. So an investigation team sent out a national request to report cases of AK to ophthalmology and optometry across the country. And indeed, there was an unusual increase in AK um, detected within two years between 2004 and 2006 across 30 states. So in 2007, a case control study um, by CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, was initiated to identify the potential risk factors. So in this outbreak example, a total of 105 cases were identified. Um, so this is a characteristic of a case control study where you start your investigation with disease and first. And now you need to have a control group for comparison. In fact, selecting the appropriate group of controls is known to be one of the most demanding aspects of a case control study. In the ideal universe, you want to have a control group uh, that, is, that is exactly the same as the case group, except that the control group does not have the disease. But we know that we cannot have such a control group, right? So in practice, controls are selected to be similar to cases only on some key characteristics um, that are known to be confounders or effect modifiers. So confounding variables are um, extraneous variables that is correlated with both dependent and independent variables or, or exposure and disease. So if not controlled for, um, we'll misunderstand the relationship under the, um, the, between them under the investigation. So it is almost always the case that the age, sex, and or ethnicity play as uh, confounders or effect modifiers in studying health outcomes. So the controls are usually matched on these variables and matching is an effort to uh, addressing these confounding issues at the design stage, even though this is not a direct means of preventing confounding. You want to be very careful what to match because once matched, then the matched variable cannot be analyzed as a potential exposure. For example, let's say you recruited your controls from the neighborhood of cases, then you may be able to, so you may also be matching on socioeconomic status because neighborhood is frequently correlated with socioeconomic status. But by doing so, now you cannot analyze socioeconomic status as a potential exposure variable because you have match the cases and controls on this variable. Sometimes overmatching uh, can happen if we make cases and controls too similar in many ways. If we do that, then the chances are that we will find nothing because stronger exposure for the disease you're looking for might have been one of those matched variables. So um, overmatching leads to the loss of validity. There are different methods matching controls. In individual matching, one case is typically matched against the n number of controls, whereas in frequency matching, cases are matched based on the characteristics uh, you are interested in matching. And in frequency matching, you try to match the, uh, the proportion of such characteristics uh, of the case group. And the amount of time to match increases as a function of number of characteristics you try to match and the, uh, the number of controls 
per case you want to employ. And the non-matched control is uh, rarely used in case control studies. Now back to the study, um, this is the uh, diagram of their matching scheme. So in this study, cases were matched for the type of lens used. And 14 cases were excluded because of the matching failure. And later on, they restricted their analysis to the soft lens wearers. So in the ideal and the simplest universe, you should get sick when you are exposed to a risk factor and you should not if you aren't exposed, right? But because disease results from multiple, multiple risk factors and their interactions, not all the cases are necessarily exposed to the same risk factor. And by the same token, some people don't get sick even after they are exposed to the risk factor because of the individual differences in resilience. So therefore, the disease occurrence is inherently probabilistic interplay between different factors. From this, uh, we should estimate risks with the given exposure for these four different possibilities to determine uh, how more likely it is to catch the disease when exposed to a certain risk factor against when not exposed. So here is the list of a list of risk factors they considered with respect to the disease. So um, the exposures they considered was like ocular traumas. So the previous experience of ocular traumas were you know, what the behavior, washing face with lens on and the year of contact lens used less than five years. They um, saw this as a kind of a risk factor and use of a specific multi-purpose solution and ever topped off solution in the contact lens case or swimming in a lake or river while wearing lenses. So these are the list of exposures they considered. And they um, calculate the odds of having the disease given each risk factors. And so the odds ratio uh, is typically used in the case control study, which we will talk about later, but um, among these risk factors, three exposures were highly associated with the disease, which were the use of a specific brand of the multi-purpose solution, ever topping off solution in people who used contact lens less than five years. So from these three, um, the cases had whopping 17 times the odds of using a specific brand of multi-purpose solution compared to the controls, whereas other two risk factors had a less than three times the odds compared to the controls. So later, it turned out that most patients who used the specific solution developed the eye disease within a month. So these results prompted the company who made the product to recall and completely withdraw their product from the market. So what uh, actually happened was that the solution itself was not contaminated. So they actually first thought that uh, maybe the solution was contaminated, but then it was not. Uh, but it was just not effective enough to kill the organism. So in case control study, the direction of inquiry is going against the actual sequence of events as indicated by the arrows. So um, this is kind of an example of how case control study is conducted. And next time we're going to talk about um, how the uh, measures of association uh, between the exposure exposures and the, and the disease occurrence is calculated in um, the case control study.